Hello, hello. Hey, hey, hey. And welcome to another episode of Life with the Lambs. I'm Candace. I'm Jonathan. And this is a weekly show where we tackle topics of all kind with the goal of creating conversation, community, and a safe space where we all get better together. Together. So tonight, um, this is, we're going into our third week of being quarantined. Um, so I know that around, uh, in different countries, the, the regulations are different, but for Bermuda, we just started a 14 day lockdown starting on Saturday. Right. And so we're two days in. So we're two days into that. Um, three days. Well, personally, I'm three days in from, excuse me, three weeks in from working from home, but Anyway, basically, we're not allowed to leave our property unless we are going to get groceries or uh, going to the hospital uh, or pharmacy. And we can, we're, we're unable to even really just go to the grocery store whenever we have a need. We actually have days that are assigned to our last name. So um, there's a little bit more of a, a stricter restriction on us this for these next 14 days and we're hoping and praying that uh, we're able to flatten the curve enough to quickly get back to um, normal or as quickly as possible. Uh, I think with the growing number of um, diagnosis yeah. and um, with the recent updates, it seems like the, that day is getting a little further and further out, unfortunately, but we're, mm-hmm. we're still praying and just believing that um, you know, things will come to an end uh, quickly. as quickly as possible. So, yeah. How are how, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing. <laughs> I'm doing. <laughs> I'm doing. Um, we've been busy. Uh, even yes. though we've been um, on the inside and we've been quarantined and all those things, we still have been busy with church, getting the word out, doing our live Um you know, coming to you guys and really trying to, you know, make a difference or what have you. And so, so we've been busy today. I was super tired. (laughs) We had a really great weekend, um, but it's been a lot of work. Um, Yeah, I've been, I've been feeling that also. Um, Just feeling like there's a lot of things vying for, for my time and attention. Mm -hmm. And I think that the feeling is that because you're home um, now there's even more, you know what I mean? There's just different kind of requests that, that vie for your time. Mm-hmm. And so uh, it makes it harder for you to carve out, um, actual spaces and, and, and appointments for things because, you know, when you're home all day, it feels like everything just blends into each other. And sometimes I find myself rolling out of bed and into my work emails and before I've had a cup of coffee, before I've done anything and, you know, it's kind of like the fairy tale where the dish runs away with the spoon and your whole day is gone and you're still in your pajamas and all of that. So uh, I don't love that, <laughs> but we're, we're working on it. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, and it's a new normal, you know what I mean? It really is like, it's a, it's a new normal. And I don't know that it has, um, I don't know that it has hit me yet. You know what I mean? Like, like we're, we're That's sheltering in place and things like that. Um, but again, like, I mean, it's getting closer and closer. Like we're finding um, friends and family, you know, that has contract, con, contract? Come in contact with it. Or they and have friends it. who have contracted the virus. Contracted it. Yeah. Right. And so, so that makes it a lot more um, real. And so some of the communities that we are a part of in the States, um, you know, we're hearing, you know, we're hearing prayer requests. We're hearing stories of folks that are dying and um, folks that are um, fighting the disease and things like that. And so I think being in Bermuda, while the numbers are, are beginning to rise, we're nowhere in the same position as like a New York, a New Jersey, Chicago, L.A., you know, those types of things. Yeah. And so when you're hearing these numbers um, on the East Coast of like thousands that have it. And then we've been, fortunately, we've been blessed here in Bermuda. Uh, we're a much smaller community, but like we're looking at 39, um, 
39 people that have um, contracted it. And unfortunately, we found out today that two people actually passed away um, from it. And so we definitely want to lift up um, those families as well. And so, so yeah, so again, it's coming closer, yeah. but I don't know, we're not in the, in the mix of it. Like we're not in that place. But what's weird is I'm talking to folks in Jersey and they're still like, they're doing their thing. Like they're still walking around. They're not, there's no That's curfew. Crazy. Yeah. What, first of all, what is that beeping? People coming on. Hi guys. <laughs> hey everybody. Hey, hey. Sonia. Hey. <laughs> hey, Darius. <laughs> hey, Damari. Hey, Eddie. Sorry guys. So uh, beeping is throwing me off. Um, but it and it and for for some of you guys who are not in, in Bermuda who may not understand why um our restrictions are so strict, we only have one hospital here on the island. And I think on a good day we have like fifty beds. I think we have a little bit less than fifty beds. Mm -hmm. And that's not even counting people who are normally sick for other reasons that are not unrelated to the virus. So it only takes that much of a, a swell for us to be overwhelmed, I think, in our healthcare situation. So our premier has been really diligent to um, kind of put a clamp down on um, everything going on here so that we're not spreading it within our community. But it is crazy because yeah. we do have family in New Jersey and they are moving about. Yeah, they're doing their thing. And I just heard a news report that was talking about the fact that, you know, Jersey's kind of like on the heels of a New York experience. Right. And so that is uh, concerning. So um, you know, what are you guys, what are some of your concerns for, for those of you who are just joining us? What are some of your concerns that you guys have been um, maybe thinking about and maybe even um, feeling kind of um, on your heart about this, this virus? How is it impacting you? Uh, mm -hmm. Besides just being at home, how is it impacting you? Uh, uh -huh. So we, we certainly want to know that. Darius, um, Johnson said one of my mother-in-law's cousins died yesterday. Oh, man. And We're so, so sorry yeah, for Yeah, we are so sorry for your loss. We are praying and for you. We will be real. praying, yeah, uh, for you guys. A uh, good friend of mine, his his mom just passed away. I'm not sure that it was because of COVID-19, but they were definitely impacted to the point where they couldn't have like a public burial, right? So they ended up doing um, or having her homegoing service online um, on a Facebook, you oh, know? Man. And so, you know, even being able to grieve like we normally would, being able to be comforted by family and friends like we normally would mm -hmm. um, is, is things are changing, right? Definitely. Things are changing. And I think for a lot of us, we've had in our mind like, okay, this is just going to kind of blow over, mm -hmm. you know, especially when this first started to break, it was kind of like people were downplaying it or whatever. And they're like, listen, other things are bigger than this and other things, you know what I mean? Very true. And, and so again, now you start seeing the numbers and you're like, wait a minute, maybe there is something to this, you know what I mean? And, um, and so again, it's, it's causing us to have to shift in our mindset and shift in our, you know, into a new normal, Definitely. um, in these things. Definitely. So are you, are you, um, uh, seeing anybody's responses for how the virus is impacting them? Um, just, I just saw Darius's, Hey guys, I, I want to ask you all that who are on, share this with your, with, if you can share this live on your page um, or share it with your friends, invite some folks in. Um, it's going to be a good show tonight. Hi, Susan. Hi, Shawnee. Hi, Camila. What's up, y'all? Hi, Asha. I'm trying to give out my shout outs first yeah, give before the, we get into all of the All of the things. things. The things. So, yeah. Um I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you kick it off. Go ahead and you, kick it off. I thought we kicked it off. Yeah, so, no, but like let's let's transition into like what we were what we said we were gonna talk about. So we're talking about really what are the things, what are the conversations that you guys are hearing around this? What are what are some of the discussions you're having? Um, I know that as as um, <laughs> Darius says, I can't find any hand sanitizer, brother. 
Listen, you can make it. I wish Tahira was here. We had a recipe for... Aloe and alcohol. Yeah, aloe and rubbing alcohol. Um, and you'll be good to go. The alcohol is the important part. And so... That is. So again, um, what are the conversations... What are the conversations that you're having around this? Um, I know in church and in our circles as ministers and whatnot, we really are focusing on how to get through it. We've been talking about Psalms 91. We've been talking about the goodness of God. The hey, guys, we're back. Sorry about that. Are guys. you with us? <laughs> come back, come back, come back. Um, there you go. We're having a... I'm sorry, we're having a, some internet issues, so please bear with us. Yeah. We're going to get this fixed this week, and um, it may mean that we're we're going live from a different location, um, but please bear with us. And so, again, um, what are the conversations? Are you running into people that are afraid? Are you running into people that, because um, it's not just, it's not just the disease, right? It's not right. just the COVID-19, it's the ripple effects. Right. And so we know people um, here that how many, it was like over a thousand that was like let go in one 1900 day. 1,900 people. There was 1,900 people that lost their jobs in a day, in a day, whether that's temporarily or permanently, right? And again, if this thing begins to extend, um, are companies able to survive? Are people able to survive? You know, have, have folks prepared uh, for this? Um, you know, um, we've talked before in the past about our emergency fund and having, you know, money set aside. They say in America, but I'm sure it's more than just America, but like um, something like 70 to 80 percent African Americans cannot survive a $400 emergency. So now if you are in a situation where you can't work for two weeks and you were already living check to check, like where does that leave you, right? And so so there's things um, as far as feeding people. So we've been blessed um, as a church to be able to um, connect with some some other organizations to help seniors to make sure that seniors are getting the meals that they need. Mm -hmm. So you have folks that are on fixed income, right? Um, but then sometimes that may be good because that's still coming in, right? Mm -hmm. However, you have folks that were living check to check and now they're off of work for two weeks, maybe longer. Um, how do you feed your family? How do you take care of bills? Do you have you set money aside for an emergency here where um, I know some places they're talking about kids not being able to go back to school uh, for the rest of the year, right? Um, all of those things. And so um, what, again, what are the conversations that you all are having um, as well? And what are, yeah, yeah. What are your, your, your greatest concerns? My I'll, I can share a few of mine going um, just as it stands now. Um, but I'm thinking, you know, now it's it's a bad situation. People mm -hmm. are ill and, and you know, we're, people are not able to work and all of that stuff. But my concern is as it continues to go on. So right now, um, it seems like we're going to be quarantined, I think, till close to the end of this month. Yeah, but speak up. if... if it goes beyond that. Like if we go into another month, then what happens? Because, you know, it, it just becomes tighter and tighter and tighter. And so the people who may have had a month's um, mm -hmm. salary set aside and they're like, okay, we can last for a few weeks. What happens, you know what I mean, when you have a whole new set of people entering into the space of need? And you know what I mean? Beyond the people who are already existing and the people who were just living check to check, like my concern is, is that. And, um, and here's a question. Once you have to start, uh, if it goes further and you have to start deciding what subscriptions are you going to let go of? Is it Netflix? Is it Hulu? Is it Disney Plus? <laughs> is it Apple TV? Is it, what is it? Like if, if one has got to go, like what's the order in which um, you need to let go of them? Oh my gosh. 
Some of y'all are gonna be pulling out your old VHS tapes. No, I'm joking. Um, but again, what we start making those decisions and start thinking about those things, like how do we prepare for what is coming? Because we've never been in this situation before. It's true. Never. And so I think, um, I think that this is a time for us to begin to think about. Um, What's next? What's coming? You know, think about, um, you know, we, we always talk about a rainy day. Well, it's raining. And so what is, what else can we do? How can you, pre how can you prepare? And it's interesting, um, as we were talking off camera, I was thinking about Matthew 25, where Jesus says, um, he, he begins to judge the nations and things like that. Um, based on, did you feed the hungry? Did you clothe the naked? Did you visit those in prison? Yeah. You know, all of those things. And so as believers, um, we're not, we don't walk in fear, um, but we, we walk in the promises of God. And we believe that the Lord is going to take care of us. And that's why sometimes it may come across like, we're not we're not embracing what's happening, yeah. but we've embraced um, a a deeper thing, a, a a greater kingdom. We just believe that the Lord is going to make ways out of no way. Um, he's going to give us what to do, when to do, and how to do it. But then that also gives us the responsibility to help take care of our neighbor. Right, and I I you're absolutely right. And I often wonder how do we live with that confidence. But how does that confidence translate to the people who don't have that hope? Mm -hmm. are, we, are we communicating our confidence in such a way that it brings peace to other people or maybe in, in a way that is attractive to somebody else to say, hey, how do you do this? Or is our confidence sometimes um, maybe dismissive of how other people are feeling and mm -hmm. it doesn't maybe translate the way that we want it Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That we want it to, to translate. And I think that is the challenge mm -hmm. when the world, when everybody is being rained upon, when the rain is falling on the just and the unjust, what does our testimony look like in a way where um, it's not just, hey, we're going to be fine. That's right. We're, we're children of God. We're going to be taken care of. Like, uh, how, like, what how does that translate to somebody who may be looking at us and being being like, I, you know, is, is this like exclusive or mm -hmm. does it come off exclusive mm -hmm. um, instead of uh, in a way that's inviting? Or is it like, I'm so sorry, you guys are in the world. And, you know, uh, if you were if you were believers, maybe you wouldn't be <laughs> bothering you guys that bad. But you know what I mean? I'm, I'm always concerned with. What, what, how are we bringing people into this relationship with Christ? Mm -hmm. And in a situation like this, we don't know whose heart is crying out. We mm -hmm. don't know who's reevaluating their life choices. We don't know who's saying, God, if you just get me out of this, I will serve you for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And so how does, how does our testimony and the way that we handle this situation help, um, mm -hmm really create a bridge for people to come into relationship with, with Jesus Christ and come into the hope and the blessing that we believe that we walk into every day. Right. I think, I think that, I think at the end of the day, we have to be who we are. I think you have to be confident in the relationship that you have with the Lord. I think that you have to know because you have a lot of believers that are terrified as well. Right. You have a lot of believers yeah. that don't believe in all the promises of God are and they are pan some are panicking, some are what so I think it doesn't serve us well to be in a state of panic. It doesn't serve us well to be in a state of terror. I remember being on a flight, um I forget where I was flying to, but uh the the flights that we were taking were very turbulent. Mm. And, and so like we had a connecting flight. And so we came out of like, most people came out of a turbulent flight and they still had to take another flight to get to their final destination. That. And that one was, we knew it was going to be turbulent <laughs> as well. And I remember I was sitting next to this young couple and 
this lady was freaking out and she was just like, oh my God, oh my God. She was, she was all over the place and she was like hanging on her boyfriend and he was like, it's going to be all right. And like, they were just terrified. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was just sitting there and I was, I was praying, um, over the flight as I normally do. And, and she looked at me, she said, how come you're not nervous? And I said, well, I believe God and I pray. She was like, oh yeah, prayer, right? Like it was almost <laughs> like she tried everything else. And then she remembered, hey, prayer is a thing, right? <laughs> and so she, I was like, yeah, I pray. And I know that God is with me. I know that I have a purpose and he has a plan for my life. And we're going to make it all right. We're going to be and like, like she was still nervous, but you could see there was a calm that came upon her because somebody else was walking in confidence. Mm -hmm. They were walking in peace. They were walking. And so as believers, we are called to walk in peace. We are called to not try to, sometimes I think, especially in this new age of seeker um, church and all this kind of stuff, we sometimes are trying to be, we're trying to connect so much that we almost dismiss um, the favor of God on our lives, trying to identify with folks, right? And so we're like, oh, we get it too. We're 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 in the same boat too, but sometimes we're we're not in the same place, right? And and again, I think being confident and folks seeing a distinction. Um, it's these times where, where, where there's chaos and unsurety and the unknown and all of those things where people begin to look and reevaluate, what do I believe? Yeah. And am I, am I secure in my ability to make it through this? Mm -hmm. Am I, and so we have to have people of God that know who they are, that are standing flat footed and saying, listen, it's, it's, it may be tough, but we're going to make it. Right. It might be hard, but God is with us right. and we are not going to panic. We are not going to bow. We are not going, we're not denying what's happening, but at the same time, we are not um, embracing it to the point where we believe it's our house too. Right. And so again, we begin to stand because somebody needs a place of refuge. You may be that place of refuge. That's why the Lord blesses us to make us a blessing, right? And so it's not just for us to stockpile our stuff. We're not in time preppers and all that kind of stuff, which prepping and being prepared is not a bad thing, it right? Is, However, we do it so that we can be a blessing. Right, right, definitely. And I, I do want to say this because I know a lot of times when, when we talk about uh, ministry we're very like ministry minded, but I think that that has a lot to do with, you know, the responsibility that Jonathan and I feel to our own life. But for some of you, you may be like, I'm not even at a place in ministry. I'm just trying to make sure that I got peace for me. Yeah. And so yeah. I do want to encourage you very similar to when you're on a flight where it says that these oxygen masks will fall down. Please put the oxygen mask on your Listen. own face first yes. before you try to put the oxygen mask on somebody else's. So if you are still battling with fear, if you are still battling with anxiety about this, listen, it is perfectly fine. And we, we, we recommend it even for you to spend time making sure that you get, grab a hold to peace for yourself. Yeah. That you grab hold to peace uh, for your household before you feel mm. any type of responsibility to bring peace to anybody else. Absolutely. You know, everyone's talking Psalms 91. And I'm telling you, if, if you haven't um, if you haven't dove into uh, that scripture, you need to Psalms 91. That whole chapter is for you. Yeah. But a good friend of mine, um, I was listening to his his um his service, his online service yesterday, and he started preaching from Psalms 90. And I thought it was so powerful because there's a scripture in there that says, you are the God, you've been our God throughout all generations. Amen to that. And, and when, when he read that, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. I was like, yeah, God, you're not new to this. Come on. 
You've been with us for all generations. You started this. Yeah. And how many epidemics, how many pandemics, how many wars, how many things have, have you had to bring the people of God through? Yes. And they've come out all right. And they've survived. And they've survived persecution. And they've survived war. They've survived sickness. They've survived disease. They've survived all of these things. Mm-hmm. You've been our God through out all generations. And I want to encourage you that the Lord is still the God of the generations. He's still the God, uh, uh, whether it's, it's a tough situation, whether it is, um, whether it is plaguing us, whether it is whatever is coming at you, he's the God that is able to handle it. Not only is he able to handle it, he has seen it before it even showed up. Yeah. And so he's given us the, the, the things that we need in order to make it through to the other side. Absolutely. And so I want to encourage you, don't allow fear to rob you of your provision. Don't allow fear to rob you of your protection. Don't allow fear to rob you of your sanity. Don't allow fear to rob you of the things that God has promised you. The Bible says that he has not given us the spirit of fear, but he has given us love power and a sound mind. I would encourage you to read 1 Corinthians 13 and read what love is and know that God is love and he's walking in that towards you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And so again, we rest in what we know about God, especially when we're not feeling it. Now, that phrase that you said, we rest in what we know about God. I have, yes, I completely agree with that. And I also want to say this. We might not be naturally fearful people. You might think about yourself and you're like, I'm not, I'm not afraid of much. But when we're in a situation like this, especially when we are shut up in the, in the four walls of our home and uh, it's so easy to become inundated with information uh, that, be, that can, uh, what it can do is it can strengthen our fears. Like, like gasoline, it can light the flame of our fears, like just light them ablaze and they can easily become overwhelming to us. So my recommendation to you for anybody who feels like, um, I'm afraid, um, mm-hmm. I'm feeling anxious. Like I can't, I can't shake it. I'm not sleeping well, all of those things. This this is pretty practical, but this is the way to be able to take a hold of your mind and take a hold of your emotions. You've got to counterbalance what is going into your eyes and into your ears. Come on. So you need to spend some time reading scripture. If you're not super familiar with the Bible, start in Psalm 91 and just read that. Read that over and over again. If you if you know your Bible, Feast on the word. I'm saying that that's a very churchy phrase, but you need to be reading scriptures about who God is because you've got to counterbalance it. The The objective of the enemy is to get your mind off of who God is and focus on the, the magnitude of this other thing that's right. trying to impose itself on your regular lifestyle. Right. And so the more that you are able to counterbalance what's happening in your mind, the more peace can come. Yeah. But as long as you're trying to hold on to a recollection of who God is and you're dealing with the current revel- <laughs> relevant information about COVID-19, you're going to have a harder time being able to be at ease. So for those of you who are, are um, feeling like you're still battling, that is, that is the way. Mm-hmm. You've got to counterbalance what you're, what you're taking in. And I guarantee you, the more time that you spend reading and rehearsing who God is and really getting that into your mind, I, t- I tell you, the spirit of peace will make its way mm-hmm. into your into your situation. Mm -hmm. The Bible talks about keeping your mind stayed on, on the Lord stayed on. And it says, when we do that, he will keep our hearts and our mind in perfect peace. Yeah. Right. And it's not this perfect peace while we're, while, while the ship is sinking, we go under and we're like, <laughs> blue, 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 blue. no, it's the peace of God that knows that he's going to come through. Yeah. It's the peace of God. And I would encourage you, um, 
as you spend spend time with the Lord because that peace is also peace also comes when you have a plan. And so the Lord will begin to download a plan for you in the midst of this. Some of you, um, I'll just say it. Some of you, uh, you know, the Lord may begin to nudge you to start baking again. He may nudge you to start cooking again in this in this time where there may be people that can't afford to eat or they can't afford, you know, um, groceries or whatever. The Lord may cause you to start a business and doing soup for for uh, just above cost or what have you. There there may be things that God is 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 going to give you to to do that is going to. Um, help you financially or help you in your situation while you're helping others in another situation. You never know. The Lord may call you to rally the community together. He may call you to do certain things that's going to bless your neighborhood and bless uh, different things. And so again, uh, we don't know what's going to happen when, when we, for us, when they lift this, this quarantine. And I was just talking to someone today, like, there may be kids that can't go back to school. And so there's parents that need to, now they can't go back to work because their kids are at school. The Lord may use you to open up a daycare or open up a drop-in center, open up, like there's problems, but there's also solutions and opportunities. Definitely. And I just believe in this season that the Lord is going to begin to connect your expertise, your, your, um, Places where you were like, man, I was trying to get hired. I was trying to do this. And they they didn't want to hire anybody. The Lord may be setting you up to do your own thing, to be a blessing to those that you already have relationship with. Yeah. And so you never know what's going on. People may not be able to get back to church. And so the Lord may have you have a have a place where people can come to your yard and you are doing a Bible study or doing it online or just a place to, to be hospitable. Again, when all of these things change, I, I personally believe that we are moving into a new normal. And, and to think that things are going to go back exactly the same that as they were, I just, I don't, I don't foresee that. Mm -hmm. I do think that the Lord's going to bring us into a new normal that will maybe better than what it was, but it certainly will be different yeah. than what it was. And the Lord for the, not just for the believer, but, but those of us that are believers, we have the privilege of getting inside information from the Lord and beginning to, to move in a direction that is going to cause us uh, to prosper, even in the ripple effects of this pandemic. Um, this is, you know, our life with the lambs is really about us um, just kind of sharing the things that we've learned and, and different things or sharing what's going on. And so we can get better together. Um, we also, we always want um, contribution from you all. And sometimes I feel like we, we go, it becomes almost like a Bible study sometimes. However, that's who we are, guys, especially this one. And so, but I do feel this in my spirit. Um, <laughs> I'm real churchy, it's like a right? Bible study. But, it's mainly her, but I sense this in my spirit. But here's the thing. If you remember Joseph, right? The story of Joseph in Genesis, I believe it's around, I'll, I'll get the reference for you. But Joseph is, he has this dream, right? Of greatness. He has this thing that God places in his heart that he is going to prosper. He's going to be the head and not the tail. He's going to, all of these things. And then uh, he gets sold into slavery. He gets sold to a, into this other country. And now he's serving pagans, right? He's serving people that don't know God or whatever, but God is with him. And these people are recognizing that God is with him. So now he has opportunity. He's running one of the government officials' homes. He's doing it very well. And then something happens. He gets thrown into jail of no fault of his own. Um, and he starts running the government prison. Uh, his gifts start making room for him. He begins to interpret dreams and stuff like that for those that are close to the king, close to the Pharaoh. And then the Pharaoh has this dream um, that 
uh, he doesn't understand what it is, but it's troubling him. And Joseph is the only one that can interpret it, right? I know many of you are like, Jonathan, we know this story. Okay, just hang with me. And so here's the deal, though. The Lord gives Pharaoh the dream of a recession, of a worldwide recession, famine that's about to hit. But he gives it to him about 15 years in advance. Right? And so uh, he says, listen, you're going to have seven years of plenty. And then you're going to have seven years of famine. It's going to be the worst thing ever. And so the Pharaoh says, okay, so what do we do? And Joseph says, listen, you need to put a person of wisdom in place. But in those seven years of plenty, begin to save. Begin to put things back. Now watch this, guys. When they do that, they follow the instruction of God that tells him what's coming seven years ahead of time. And it's going to last this whole situation. It's going to be seven years of good, but then seven years of bad. So like before the bad comes, he's like, listen, this is what you do in the good. He does that. They follow the instruction of God. And in the worst recession known at that time, Egypt begins to prosper because of the wisdom and the inside information that God gave Joseph. Yes. He doesn't just, now here's the thing. He doesn't just feed everybody. But now the nations are coming to Egypt because Egypt is the only one with provision. And so they're buying food, they're buying grain, they're doing all of these things and then it comes to a place where they run out of money because the recession or the famine lasts longer than their resources. So you know what they do? They bring the deeds to their land. And so not only does Egypt get rich, but now they get increased territory because they prepared um, in advance for what was coming. What are you saying, Jonathan? I'm saying that in the midst of this, we don't know how long we're going to be locked down. We don't know what the ripple effects are going to be. Yeah. But in the midst of this, if you can get quiet enough, if you can hear the voice of God enough, if you can move beyond your fears of starting new things and changing yeah. and 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 have uh, be encouraged to do something a little bit different, the Lord may be setting you up for what? For the years that are coming after this crisis. And I just want to say this, too, because, and this might just be my own little thing, so you please, you know, if this does not apply to you, don't even, don't even sweat it. But I have been feeling so, like, Joseph, he had a solution mm -hmm. that was larger than himself. Mm -hmm. Like, but... That, that requires you having an ear to hear for something that's bigger than you. Right. And I've, I've been thinking about that because I'm like, you know, I don't want to just pray for my myself and my, my household and all. Like I do. I do want to pray for for my own protection and I my, the protection of my household and the protection of my father and my brother. I do care about those things. But like... The reason why we're in the earth, the reason why we're salt is because we're supposed to cover the rest of the earth the same way that Jesus would. So make sure, like, I just want to encourage you, make sure that you're praying for more than your situation. Make sure that you're praying for your community. Make sure that you're praying not just for the first responder. Pray for your city. Pray for your your um, your um your county. Pray the for government. your state. Pray for your... Pray for these things because the more that we're able to shift our focus to something bigger, mm -hmm. the more it creates opportunity for the Lord to speak to us about bigger things. Sometimes we don't have the solutions that like like Joseph had because we're so self-centered. And right. I'm not saying that shady, but our focus is so small mm -hmm. that the Lord, it, the only words that we're hearing are things concerning ourselves. Right. Because we're not even looking. Our, our, our concern isn't else. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's not out, it's not out there. Right. So so for the people of God that hear God, begin to pray. Begin to pray outside of yourself. Right. Begin to pray larger. Your kingdom come. Your 
your will Will be be done. done. Begin to pray those things for your world. Because who knows how deliverance will come in your city? Who knows how deliverance will come in your schools? Who knows how deliverance will come in your region? It may just be through you. Right. And Jeremiah, we all know, or most of us know Jeremiah 29 and 11. Uh, for I know the thoughts that I have towards you, says God, thoughts of a peace, um, not to harm you, but to bring you, give you a hope and an expected end, right? Um, but the scriptures, the verses above that, it says, listen, pray for your city. Come on. And they were in bondage at the time. He says, pray for your city that it would prosper because if it prospers, you will prosper, Yes. right? And so again, it's not this position of us and them. You are in the midst of this to bring about the kingdom of God, to bring about peace, to bring about prosperity, to bring about hope, to bring about uh, um, the presence of God, to bring about healing in multiple ways, right? And so the Lord has you there for a reason. Reason. And so you need to begin to find out, God, what is this reason? Yeah. What, how do I need to connect? He may say, listen, I need you to, I need you to connect with the PTA. I need you to find out or just check on them. I need you to do this, or I need you to do that. You know what I mean? And so all of those things. And so again, whatever he's telling you to do or whatever you feel a nudge to do, Begin to do that because you don't know um, how that will be the catalyst for great things on the other side. Yes, yes. And the other thing I want to say is say it. don't be afraid to do your part. Mm-hmm. And your part might not look like the part. It may not look like the defining thing. It may not look like you being um, in the forefront of it um, because the Lord is... is um, he mobilizes the whole world. He mobilizes resources from all over the place. And so uh, I remember there were times when um, I was really like wrestling, wrestling with um, things that the Lord was telling me to do, not because I didn't want to do them, but they just didn't make sense to me. Cause I was like, but God, that's not enough. That's not enough to do this, or that's not enough for this to happen or that. Um, but the Lord was like, Candace, you are only obligated to like, you're obligated to your obedience and that obedience doesn't have to be the whole thing in its entirety. And oftentimes it's not because the Lord is using everybody. He's causing all things to work together for the good. And that doesn't mean that, you know what I mean? We as an individual are going to be the complete solution of everything for all things. Uh (laughs) You know, sometimes it's our contribution to a situation mixed with somebody else's contribution to a situation that brings about the solution for the whole. Uh And so I just want to encourage you, if you feel like the Lord is giving you instructions, but you feel like those instructions feel incomplete, do it anyway, Uh because you don't know who else who, what other piece of the puzzle the Lord is also mobilizing. And so it just may be a timing thing that when you mobilize at at his word and somebody else mobilizes at his word, the Lord can, can bring miracles in your, in your situation and, and for the people around you. And sometimes it's just showing up. Yeah. Just show up. I was, um, one of the pastors that we follow, um, he's the pastor of Mosaic church. Um, Erwin McManus love that man of God. And, um, and so he was saying that back at 9-11, he was, um, he was growing his church. Oh, he was yeah. doing different things or what have you. And when 9-11 hit, like everything went into a panic, right? Yeah. And so he was, he was doing, um, people were calling him in to kind of speak to different places or whatever. It was, he wasn't on a big scale at all. But what happened was during 9-11, all the big speakers or the majority of the big speakers at that time, they were terrified. And, um, and I'm not, that's not shade. They just, they canceled all of their meetings. They canceled all of their speaking engagements. And so they called them. They were like, can you come or whatever? And he was like, sure. And so he started going and word got out that he was available. Right. And in that season, he began to speak at all of these large conferences. And so once the panic of 9-11 and the panic of flying at that time kind of passed, he was already in the circuit now. Mm -hmm. He was already his name was known. His name was. And so while everyone else had canceled, it was like 
doors were opening up for him. And you never know how showing up will open up doors and that when this ripple effect kind of slows down, you you already have momentum moving forward. And yeah. so again, it's important that we hear God, that we don't panic, and that we move on what he's saying do. Yeah. Amen to that. Do it. <laughs> thought you had some. Come on. No, no. I mean, I'm just thinking about my own situation. Yeah, it's it listen. What do I need to do? Listen, y'all. It's you can look at like there's things um I think it's the serenity prayer. Mm -hmm. But it talks about Lord, help me to know the difference between the things that I can change and the things that I can't. And there's some things that are happening right now that you absolutely don't have control over, right? But then there are things that you do and you need, we need to focus on the things that we do have control over and the things that God is telling us to do, um, the things that, that we feel in our heart that we're supposed to be doing. Because what will happen is as we focus on these other things that we don't have authority over or control over, it will paralyze us. Mm -hmm. And we'll just keep staring at it and looking at it and talking about it and, and talking about how bad it is and can you believe this or whatever, instead of moving on the things that we have control over. And I'm telling you that doors are absolutely swinging open for you. I feel that in my spirit. Doors are swinging open for you. Doors and favor is speaking over, over um, you, um, are coming on you and blessing you. Doors are opening up for you. Um, much like a, um, you know, when you go into the grocery store, the automatic doors, as, as you approach, they will open, right? And I'm telling you that some of you have been praying things for years. Some of you have been praying things for your loved ones. Some of you have been praying things for your for your family, for your friends, people that don't know the Lord, that they would come to know the Lord. And, and we're like, God, whatever you have to do. And then something like this shows up and we're ready to rebuke the devil, rebuke the devil and all of these things. But the Lord will use this season I'm not saying that he is the orchestrator of this, mm -hmm. but he will take whatever season and in the midst of it, begin to direct things. And I'm telling you in this season, this season could be the answer to your greatest prayers. Mm -hmm. This season could be the answer to your greatest prayers. And so some of you may be thinking like, how in the world am I supposed to know that? Like, what, what, how, how would I even know? Um, and I, I think my only recommendation is to ask the Lord. Um, we believe in scripture. It says that the Lord um, will lead you and guide you into all truth. Um, and that's a promise that we stand on. We, we thank the Lord every day. God, we thank you for leading us and guiding us into all truth. But even as you're praying, Lord, um, if there's something that I should be doing right now, I pray that you would just give me strategy mm -hmm. um, for some of us. I'm not going to say for some of us, for many of us, we need strategy in terms of what to do with our finances. Mm -hmm. You'll find that the Lord is going to say, hey, put some of this away. You, you may find that he says, hey, invest in this. Uh, you might find that he says, hey, um, put this away or or give this, sow this. Um, this is, this is not just the time to be frozen in place and to be hoarding the same way that we talked mm -hmm. about, um, not just stockpiling up for yourself and, and not really being, um, aware of your brothers and, and sisters and, and needs that they may have. Think about your money the same way. The Lord may be positioning you financially in this, um, uh, so that you can come out, uh, so that you can either last or so that you can come out better or both. Mm -hmm. So How, be, oh, sorry. be mindful of what the Lord is saying um, to you to do with your money. And it may not even come during a time of prayer. It may just come as an off-the-cuff thought that you know is not your own. But be mindful of that. Um, you know what I mean? Because the Lord, I believe he is giving instructions during this time. Absolutely. Let me ask you all a question. Um and you can respond in the comments or you can respond um, you can respond in the comments or respond with a like. How many of you would say, say, Jonathan, like I hear what y'all are saying and like I agree or what have you, but I just don't have the full knowledge of how to do some of those things. 
Yeah. Like some of you, like I know a lot of people would say, oh, you need to do that business plan. You need to do this. You need to do that. And um, but you would say, listen, I'm not sure how to do a business plan. I'm not sure how to do um, what my vision is. I don't know how to write the vision and make it plain. I'm not sure of how to to organize my thoughts. There's a lot of things that I want to do, but um, if I knew how to do it, I would do it. Right. And if that's you, let us know. And it may be other things. You may say, I'm not sure. I'm not confident in hearing the voice of God and knowing that it's God. Like, I want to do what he says, but I'm just, I'm just not there yet. You know, whatever those things are, put that in the comments. It's, you know, don't be um, or embarrassed. Private, or message us. Or private message us. Because we've been thinking about this may be a good time for us to do some online possible workshops or bring some folks in that we know that are good at these things. Yeah. Right. That can walk us through how to do a business plan that can walk us through how to do vision casting that can walk us through, you know, how to hear the voice of God or um, whatever that is, you know, how to do how to rally some things, you know, how to organize our thoughts. And so, again, if that's you and you would say, yeah, that would be beneficial um, or I know people that could really benefit from that. And that's something that we would love to have. Um, just put that in the comments or hit hit the like button or the heart button. Yeah, so. We, we want to be a place where, again, we're building our tribe. You guys hear us say that a lot. Mm -hmm. And sometimes your tribe is not always in the same proximity that you are. Right. But we're in a place now where there's a global tribe. There's, there's people across the globe that we can now connect with and we can glean from their wisdom and glean from their encouragement and glean from different things and say, listen, I want to be a part of, of a tribe or a people or a community that's going to help me be better and not criticize me for what I don't know. Or criticize me from, like, I've tried in the past and I failed and people have laughed at me or I felt embarrassed or what have you. So I'm just trying to figure it out on my own. And, and here's the thing. You can do that, but it takes a longer period of time to get things done Listen. when you're trying to, <laughs> when you're trying to run on your own sometimes. Listen, you do not get any extra credit points for trying to rough it on your own, especially when you have people in your community that can help you. Please, please, please be expeditious about it. Get help. Yes. Get help. Talking from somebody who knows, who has been there, who has has just done stupid things for a long time <laughs> when you don't have to because people around you have knowledge mm -hmm. and they're willing to give of it if you if 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 i would have just taken the, the the responsibility off of myself to do all and be all then i probably could have been further faster yeah absolutely and then you'd be surprised how sometimes it's just having the conversation with the right person yeah and as you're talking it out all of a sudden things just start making sense yes right some of some of us we need help with time management some of us, we're stuck in place, we're sheltering in place, but we don't know what to do. Come on. We don't know how to schedule things. Some some parents don't know how to schedule their kids right now because the schedule was already built in. Come and on. so now the schedule is all over the place. And now and so are the kids. And so are the kids. Now the kids are up to <laughs> 1 a.m. They're getting up late. You're tired. You're frustrated. All this kind of stuff. So again, we feel like we don't have time to do certain things. But if you begin to schedule it right, if you begin to put people on a on a schedule and begin to put yourself on a schedule and begin to figure out how to use even technology to your advantage, things will become easier because a lot of the times that the things that stop us or frustrate us is that we don't have a plan. That are we don't have clarity of thought, and so our 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 mind is all over the place, right? And so you can't just Netflix and chill throughout the whole day. Listen, you know what I mean, and and try to work at the same time because all of a sudden now you're binge watching. Listen, all of a sudden you're like, listen, I'm going to get all of this done today. Now you're tired. Now you're sleepy in the middle of the day. All this kind of stuff. And so again, sometimes it's having someone to help you to manage your time to put things in place, 
to clean the house, to like, there's a lot of little things that, that are not directly the thing that you're trying to do, but it's directly affect or indirectly affecting what you're trying to do. And so if we can begin to bring some people in to say, listen, this is how you can do this. This is how you can be more efficient with your time. Here are some things or people that they may know where there's pockets of resources in your city. There's pockets of resources. They're looking for folks that will show up and help in these arenas. You know, you may say, listen, I don't have, I want to feed folks, but I don't have the resources to do that. But someone else is doing it down the street and you join with them and then you get connected to the people that are funding the whole thing. And now they get to know you and now they're saying, listen, we need to set up another site. Can you run it? You don't know how God is about to launch you into your new career, into your new purpose, into or your same purpose, but you couldn't get traction before. Now there's all the traction in the world. Yeah. And some of you guys may just be so convinced that all you need is money and the and money is the least of your worries. Right. You just need the right idea. Yes. You need the right person to say that what you're really looking for doesn't require money. That's it. Because there are so many things out there that, you know, I I have been held up on thinking, "Oh man, well, I just need this or I just need resources for this and that mm -hmm. and this and that," not realizing that I just was missing a centralized piece mm -hmm. and then that thing connected me to everything that I That's needed it. and the thousands of dollars that I thought that I needed, I was able to bypass. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes when you feel like you don't have anything, that becomes the biggest hindrance right. to you. It becomes a big hindrance in your creativity mm -hmm. and all of those things. But when that stops being an issue for you mentally, not even physically, when mentally money stops being an issue for you, you will find that your creativity can soar. That's it. That's it. You guys should check out the book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Um, it talks to those things um, and it helps you to think through how money works and things like that. But a lot of times money is not the issue. Like you said, it, it really is our ability. Some of us, you don't need money. You need access. Right. And the Lord is wanting to connect you to access. And so, again, it's in these times of crisis where organizations are now beginning to come together to to help, you know, to be a help or to offload some resources that if they don't offload it, it's just going to rot or die on the vine or what have you. And so you begin to help in distributing that. Um, and now you're rubbing shoulders with the people that are making decisions and certain things. I remember Bishop Jakes talking about, like we all celebrate Bishop Jakes. He's like the king of the hill, right? He's the man and, the man. and has been, right? And so, but here's the thing, all the things that you see him doing were always already locked up in him, even when he was in Virginia with the jerry curl. Right. And so here's the thing is that he is he Why says he says in his <laughs> <laughs> he says in his book, it was one thing that opened the door to everything. Yeah. And some of us, we have big vision, but it's it's too big to get through the door. Right. And so you need that one thing that's going to get you through the door. And when you get through the door, it's going to pull everything else through the door. And so let me just say this. And so this. so his book, Woman Now Art Loose, was his thing. It was the one thing he had just written that book. Um, and uh, he was actually in, in, in the process of buying a house finally. Um, and they oh, were yeah. like, they loved the book, but they were like, listen, you're going to have to put up your own money for this, the seed money for this. And it was the same amount of money as the deposit on the house. Mm -hmm. And he had been promising his wife, like, we're going to get the house. We're going to get the house. And so he went to, he was like, listen, he was like, this is your decision. I promised you this house, but it's the same amount of money. She said, go ahead and do the book. When they did the book, it opened the door for everything else. Yes. And and the thing about it is, is some of you, you've got big vision and it's all good and it's all God. But you need to ask the Lord, Lord, what is the one thing that I need to be doing in this season? Dude. What is the one thing that is going to get me through the door that I'm going to be able to pull everything else through? Okay. In 
Speaking of Bishop Jakes, uh-huh. I just watched a sermon from him. You guys, have you guys seen his sermon called Stability? Uh, what was it? It has something to do with stability and fruitfulness. If you guys haven't seen that, go watch it. It's a recent, I want to say it was from like last Wednesday, whatever. Anyway, he was talking about that. Mm-hmm. And he was saying that, We so desire fruitfulness. We desire to be on the other side of having the one thing that breaks it all. We desire to be, you know what I mean, into that in that place where we're bringing solution and we're being paid for it and da 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 blah 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 blah. And he was saying that um, on the flip side of that, he was like stability. Stability is what brings fruitfulness. And so, so often we're so focused on fruitfulness that we don't have stability. So we're, we're not as diligent as we could be. We haven't developed the idea as much as we needed to, to, to develop it. We haven't put together the plan the way that we needed to put it together. Um, we have no, no real reputation with people because people don't know if we're one way today or the, another mm. day, the next day. He's like, we have no stability. And the stability is what brings about fruitfulness. Desire doesn't bring about fruitfulness. Um, Ideas don't bring about fruitfulness. Stability brings about fruitfulness. And when I tell you that thing convicted me all the way to my core, I was like, man, that is the honest to goodness truth. So with stability, would that include consistency? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Like... Are we, and we were talking about it. Do you know what you believe and why? Mm -hmm. That's the question that, listen, that's a question that every believer has to ask themselves all the time because it takes consistent, stable faith to live this life. Mm -hmm. Okay. And let me, let me say this about the, the why, because many of you are, you know why you're saved. You know why you serve God, you know, but the question is, what is the why for your assignment? What is the why for your purpose? Because everybody's why is not the same. True. Right? So your desire, the thing that God is calling you to do or the thing that you're passionate about or whatever, like what is that? What is that why? What? And are you willing to be honest? Right? Some of you, like some of us were afraid to be honest with our own desires and our own dreams. Some of you, you're like, man, I just want to be like, I want my family to be able to be stable. I want my kids to be stable. I want to be able to provide and be able to make sure that we're able to do and go where we want to go and how we want to go in the future. And there's nothing wrong with that, mm-hmm. right? There, there, like you got to figure out your why. You may want more time. Some of you are called to travel the world. Some of you are called to, to help Bring leadership to your community or your city or your government or whatever it is. Like, what is your why? What is the thing that you desire? Um, But sometimes it's taken so long that you just kind of put it on the back burner and you're like, you know what? Don't even worry about it. Right. You've got to get back and be honest. What is it that that you need? What is it that you desire in your life? I think in addition, not in addition, but I think in order for us to really know the whys, not just what we believe, not not just the why, but the what and the why, it takes time. It takes time to really think about those things and to assess, like, what am I really going after? Um, If we're honest, many of us, if you were put on the spot today and asked, what is it that you want? we would find ourselves grasping at straws a bit because we haven't really sat down and really given it much thought Mm -hmm. because we live life so often, but just by the seat of our pants, Mm -hmm. like we do the things that we have to do. We think about the things that we have to think about. We show up for the things we have to show up for, but we're not really uh, taking time to develop the the engine for why we're doing mm-hmm. all of this mm-hmm. you know and and for some of us you know it it's built in like I do it for my family because yeah it's your responsibility for your family but but there's got to be more than that especially when you're a representative of Jesus Christ right. there has to be more than just 
you looking out for your family, even though that's a big part of it. Mm -hmm. So how do you commit that time to say, God, what is my why? And really allow his why and your why to come together. But I tell you what, it doesn't come on the fly. It doesn't come on the go. You're not going to get it in transit. You really need to spend time with the Lord and with your own thoughts and try to to put those things down because that's the only way that you're going to be Come able to, to, to grasp it enough for you to run with it. Come and on. so often we're trying to run, run and get it on the way. And it, it just doesn't work like that. Nothing works that way. Yeah. <laughs> we're trying to, to serve God by understanding the gist of things, it doesn't work that way. You have to know him. You've got to know why you want to do this thing. Because when the storm comes, <laughs> when the wind blows, when the rain comes, um, you know, it it's hard there you can't withstand it. You can't mm-hmm. you cannot withstand your pace and and your effect your effectiveness as a as a believer if you're just relying on the gist of things. Mm-hmm. You've got to know it. Right. Absolutely. You know, we we read that scripture that it says, write the vision, make it plain so those that read it can run. And I think a lot of times we do that. Um, I know there's some ministers on, on the line and we do that for our career. We do that for our calling. We do that for a lot of things, but sometimes we don't do that for our own life. Or our family. Or our family. Or our marriage. Our mar- yeah. So, so again... Like we, we're not writing a vision for our personal things, right? And sometimes we're not honest with what some of the things that we want or desire or the reason why we want and desire that. And I'm not saying that those desires have to be always be the main thing, but if you don't recognize those things, then you can't even go deeper. And sometimes we're denying that because we're like, I shouldn't want it. I should like we feel we feel ashamed of why we want what we want. Sure. We feel ashamed of the things that are driving us, right? But they're your desires. Yeah. They belong to you. And so begin to look at those things and begin to and then once you look at them, you can decide like is that, you know, is this a good reason or or do I need to adjust this or what have you? Um, you know, does this line up with what God wants? You know, that type of thing. But be honest about that. And it's okay. And I think a lot of times we short we short circuit our own desires and our own progress because we're trying to do things that people are okay with. Or we're that other people's that opinion do. that other people's opinions are okay with it. Sure. And it's not about other people's opinions. It's about what God has called you to do and what your journey is and what it is that's in your heart to do. And so begin to begin to embrace, listen, we talked about it the other day, begin to understand that you are worth dreaming about. You are worth the vision that God has given you, mm-hmm. right? And so, and it may be totally different than somebody else. And it's okay. It may be totally different than the community you come from. It may be totally different from the family you come from. And some of us are are moving slow because our family's not endorsing us. Our friends or our community is not endorsing it because they don't understand it. But you do, or you want to, Right. And so begin to press in uh, because the Lord has placed that desire there. Yeah. Yeah. Don't discount the desires of the Lord. Listen, listen, there are things like the things that we're doing right now, the, the video that we're doing right now, the live stream, the, all those things like these aren't it's, it's interesting because I think my grandfather, he had video stuff. But I know, I didn't see my dad doing this or anyone else doing this. They they might have done some photography or whatever. But like this desire to to create stories, this desire to do moving pictures, this desire to make film and and to do live and to do video production and stuff like that. Listen, it was so far fetched. No one talked about that with me mm-hmm. in my family, right? But there are now that I look back, there's like creative things that have been through the family, through the generations or whatever. But like, 
They basically, everything was about ministry. Everything was about a microphone in your hand and a crowd in front of you, right? And I felt there was an unspoken expectation that I embraced and I took on that that began to cut me off from the very thing that really gets me excited about the calling of God, right? And some of you, you are, you are trying, you are trying to, um, <laughs> you are trying to, to do what you're called to do, but also please the people that you are in relationship with. And sometimes those things don't track at the same pace, right? Sometimes you got to do what you're called to do, and then people will catch up later to what you have accomplished, mm -hmm. you know? And so begin to move on the things that God is calling you to do. Yeah. I was, I was just talking to a friend of mine today, and we were talking about, um, you know, this even this whole thing about kind of being quarantined and having to do everything online and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And the fact that the Lord had, you know, really blessed you to learn about this stuff and to mm -hmm. be able to do it. And uh, just a moment of transparency, when when Jonathan and I moved to, um, to California to um, just to, to be with my family, there was a, you know, a, there weren't many people in our life that felt like that was the right thing to do. Um, and you know, there were some people who were very clear that were like, you are outside of the will of the Lord. Um, and that's not what you should, you should be doing. But we knew that we had heard from the Lord mm -hmm. to, um, to, to move there. And so, um, apart from everybody else's approval, we moved and we, we did what we believed that we felt like the Lord had said for us to do. And so while we were there, um, there were many things while we were there that proved to us that we had heard from, from the God. Lord. Mm -hmm. It may not have proved to other people because they were looking at us and thinking, um, why are you doing this? You know, there were other opportunities for you to have. You're messing it up. You're ruining things, blah, blah, blah. But we knew that we had heard from the Lord. And so from, from that time until now, we can look back and say, but had we not had that opportunity when we lived in California, we would not be able to be in this place with mm -hmm. the knowledge that we have to be able to bring solution to uh, people and to ministries the way that we have. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, had we been so focused on proving to other people or, you know what I mean, or appeasing other people, um, in terms of like doing what, what it, it, if we would not have moved because other people didn't agree with us, we would have been out of the will of the Lord. And, and the very people who, who felt like we were <laughs> out of the will of the Lord, they would have suffered because of it, because now right. they're reaping the benefit of it. <laughs> right. It's just like the story of Joseph that we talked about earlier. It was his brothers that sold him into slavery because they did not agree or like the dreams he was having. But it was Joseph being in slavery, being in prison, and then being in the palace that absolutely rescued and saved their lives from certain death and genocide. Yeah. And so I want to be, I want to just say this and I feel like, you know, if it's flowing, but it doesn't really match with everything that we've been talking about. But for those of you who feel like the Lord is calling you to do something and you feel like it's going against the uh, grain from your community, like be number one, be clear that it's the Lord that's calling you. Yeah. But number two, obey God. That's it. Obey God. Because Here's the thing, and I was joking with a friend of mine today. The whole foundation of our faith is that we walk by faith and not by sight. But oftentimes when we're dealing with our loved ones, they're making judgment calls on our obedience based on sight. Right. And so we've got to be comfortable. We've got to start being comfortable with not only um, having faith, but walking by faith. And, and a lot of times that feels like we're walking against the approval of people. Mm -hmm. But as long as you, you are a hundred percent sure that you are walking in the obedience of God, that is really all that matters. Right. 
Now, I'm not telling you to revolt against <laughs> your, your pastor. I'm not telling you to stick it to the man. I'm not telling you to stick it to your parents or anything like that. But I am telling you to obey God. And if you know that you know that you know that you have heard the voice of the Lord, then it is our obligation as followers of Jesus Christ to obey the right. word of the Lord. Right. And sometimes that means that everybody's not going to agree. Yeah. And we've got to become comfortable right. with that. And sometimes it gets tough. You know what I mean? Obeying God is not, just because you're obeying God does not mean that storms are not going to come. Yeah. It does not mean that hard times are not going to come. But there is an assurity in in those hard times that he's going to get you to the other side, right? And that's why you've got to know for yourself that you've heard from God and you're not just doing it on a whim. You're not just doing it um, because someone else did it. You're doing it because this is what you feel in your heart that the Lord has for you. There's a peace about it, right? And here's the thing. I don't even want you to be, I just want you to know that when, when storms show up, doesn't it doesn't automatically mean that you're out of the will of God, right? right? But then there's times where we can miss it. But it's okay because the Lord's with you wherever you are. Right. And he will let you know, okay, like turn left, make a U-turn, go back, you know. And and again, it's the success is in the obedience. It's not just in the results, right? It's in the obedience because the Lord is taking you somewhere in the midst of all of these things. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like we've been kind of all over the place. Well, yeah, not really. I feel like it's been like a pop, a popcorn bag. But yeah. I, I did feel like it was important yeah. to say that last thing because yeah. so often we get into this place of like, you know, and I, and I think we've been there too, where it's like, I'm, I've got to prove to you that Come I on. heard from the Lord right. and we don't, you don't right. have to prove to anybody. And that, that can you get you in trouble sometimes. It can get you right off track Yeah, Be because now you're dealing with the heart issue Yeah, and you, you've drifted away from the, 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 the quest for oh, obedience yes, that was initially mm -hmm. the, the intention for the Lord. That's why he gave you the instructions. But, um, you know, if we're, what happens is if I'm if I'm in this place and now I'm now I'm trying to prove to you I'm doing more than I need to I'm doing less than I need to I'm I'm off track because mm -hmm. the my only obligation is to obedience right. that's my only obligation my obligation is not to my parents right. my obligation is not to my community not in that sense and it's certainly not when there's a choice if it's obedience and then obedience is always first right and I'll say this. Um, listen, like it's not, you don't have to prove who you are, guys. You just have to be who you are. The Lord will prove those things, right? You don't have to, you don't have to, um, be your own cheerleader, right? And what happens sometimes is that we get into a place where we're like, we're trying to prove to whether it's family, friends, enemies, or what have you, like, I'm going to do it and I'm going to be this and I'm going to, and you are going to do it and you are going to be those things. But when you get into, when your motive is to stick it to someone or your motive is to prove it to someone, when you get in trouble and it's time for you to retreat, you won't retreat because you're stubborn and you're like, I'm not going to give them the satisfaction. I'm not going to, I told, and you're embarrassed sometimes. And like, sometimes it is for you to go back home. Sometimes it is for you to, to come back and you've missed it somewhere or what have you. And it's okay. But like some of us, we're stuck in a, in a track that is not, that has dried up, that is not working for us. That is not moving for us. And the Lord is saying, listen, I need you to do this. And it feels like a demotion. It feels like I failed. It feels like those things. But the Lord is in it. Oof. And he will make up the difference, I'm telling you. And, and sometimes, listen, sometimes it's our ego. It's our ego that gets us trapped out there with no help. It's our ego get, that gets us trapped out there for a decade of no fruit. Listen, and it started off, and, and the way that it can be confusing is that it started off with a genuine instruction from right. the Lord. And it got murky along the way. But I also want to deal with the flip side of that, 
when there are somebody when there's somebody in your life who says that they believe that they have heard from the Lord and you disagree. And so then you get stuck in your ways and you begin to wish the the you you begin to wish for the demise of their plans because you're like you're going the wrong way. You know this I know this relationship is going to dry up. I know that this is this is this and we just begin to wait for that thing to fall apart. And I was just mm. thinking about this, you know what I mean, here lately because even if they do go the wrong way, it's for the Lord to correct them. Right. It's for the Lord to bring them back. And it's our responsibility to make sure that there's a door that's open for them yes. to come back into to be restored. Come on. There are so many people who have tried it on their own and maybe misstepped, maybe stepped out, maybe, you know what I mean? They didn't get it right. But because we are so concerned with being right, we have to prove it to them that we were right and they were wrong. And it comes down to a battle of wills and we cannot have the restoration that we need. Yeah. And even people who are suffering with this virus, who we feel like our relationship has been twisted, whatever, whatever, and now they're out there and we're just like, I just hope nothing happens to you. I just hope, listen, listen, the world is going through a lot right now. And the wall and the doors of the church, and I'm not talking about the building of the church, I'm talking about the doors of the kingdom of God need to be extended Open. to all hurting people. Come on. And so there are people who have been on your wrong side for a long time. But we need to allow them to, to, to know that the door is open because you don't know who's making what decisions when they're crying out at home. You don't know who's needing a phone call to say, hey, I've been thinking about you. Not only have I been thinking about you, but I've been praying, praying for, for you. you. I've been standing in the gap for you and your family and your family's financial situation and your family's health and your own mental health. I've been standing in the gap for you. I've been um so so just moved in my spirit. Like, yeah. God, I don't want to be a sympathetic Christian. Come I want to be a compassionate Christian. And I want that compassion to move me to do something for somebody. Yeah. Don't cut people off because they don't hear the word that you hear. Come on. For them. Um, man. Like, And I'm not saying because there's a thin line between enabling people, you know, but I'm, I'm saying... Pray for them. Sometimes we get into this posture, like I got the word of the Lord and I'm releasing it to you, you know, and we're like, we are more excited that we heard God to give a word than for them to receive it and be blessed, right? And some folks, they, they are embarrassed, guys. Like they are out there. You were right. You were right. You were absolutely right. But now they are out there suffering, right? And and we got to find out, is the Lord telling us to go after? We talk about Jesus. Oh, he'll, he'll, he'll leave the 99 and find the one, right? But are we willing to do that, right? And I just, I'm shaking my, you guys saw me shaking my head because I remember there were days and um, there were days where I was just like, I just needed a word from the Lord. Like there's been times in my life, in my journey where I have felt so lost and so alone. Not that I was in a backslidden state, but it was like, I, I felt like I couldn't hear God and things weren't working. And I was just out there. And I, I remember one day walking through an airport and it felt like there was no favor on my life. I was arguing with folks and you know, it take a lot for me to, to yell at people. I don't know. Right. But all kinds of stuff was happening. I remember I was just walking. I saw a rabbi. I saw, um, I think I saw some Muslims. I saw a priest. I saw all of these people. And I was just like, Lord, does any of them have a word for me? <laughs> like I just needed, I just needed to be seen. I just needed a word to know that God was still with me. How many of us have missed it before? 
How many of us have ignored the word of the Lord in somebody else's mouth and did our own thing? How many of us deny or, or miss what the Lord told us to do and we did a different thing? Come on. And we were we were in a mess. We it was our fault, you know? And and, and we needed somebody just to say it's going to be all right. Listen, come on. And then there've been times where people have shown up and been like, "Jonathan, it's going to be okay." And that one word of compassion, that one word that says, I know you missed it. I know you're out here, but the Lord is not finished with you yet. Come on. And that is the truth, guys. That's the truth. Whether we, they obey a prophetic word or not, whether whether they, they, they are always in step or not, it's going to be okay. Yeah. That's why Jesus is a redeemer. He knows how to redeem us out yeah. of our crap. <laughs> he does it all the time. Yeah. Sometimes we think that we are offering the Lord better than what the next man is offering, but the Bible says that all of our, our, all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. I don't have a better rag than the next person, yeah. okay? Me, and, you, and you certainly don't have a better rag than me. Just kidding. <laughs> but that's the I point. Don't have those kind of rags. <laughs> <laughs> that's the point. We're all in this together. Yeah. And and the more that we the more that we just kind of get down to the to the basics of this and be like, it's okay. We all need God. We all need grace. We all have fallen. And come short. That is of how the, glory the compassion of, God. of Christ can begin to take ground and take territory in the earth. When we can begin to love each other beyond us being right. And we have to create, oh man, this is going into a whole nother thing, but we have to create a space for folks that have missed it, for folks that are hurting, to find a place of safety to be healed, to be, to be taught, to be corrected in a way, in a way that keeps their dignity. That's huge. In a way that that covers them, right? Not in a way that we want to expose them. We want to, I was right, wasn't I? I gave you that word five years ago, wasn't it? Didn't I? You know what I mean? And it's like they're already broken, Yeah. right? And we want to break folks down further, but we've got to be able um, to have a safe place for us to talk, to be corrected, to be helped, to be loved on, to be filled, and all of those things um, when we're going through it. Because this journey is not for the faint at heart. And so, yeah, we believe Psalms 91. Yeah, we believe all these things. But there's times where we hit a wall going 100 miles an hour. Yeah. There's times where we get um, displaced. There's times where our faith, it's a shield, but that shield gets dented. There's a time where we knew we were right and we stepped off of a cliff and we tumbled down on some rocks and we're like, I just need some help. I've fallen and I can't get up. And so again, we've got to be able to create this space, even in this COVID-19, like there's so many folks that are, they're not just sheltering in place. They're sheltering by themselves in the spirit because they don't trust anyone else. And there's a spiritual COVID-19 that is taking the breath out of people because this social distancing in the spirit has gotten so far that they're isolated and the enemy is taking them out. And I'm telling you that this is a season where we've got to find our tribe. We've got to find our the rest of our body that is connected to us, that is dying because they're, they are disconnected from the flow of life and the flow of God that is trying to go from heart to heart, breast to breast. And so again, um, I don't know how we got on this thing, but I, I feel so passionate about it because as believers, as leaders, as pastors, as ministers, sometimes we're trying to protect our own ego and protect our own title. And we are dying on the inside. And the thing is, people can already see it. It's true. But we are not, we, we are more afraid of of being exposed. We're more afraid of other people speaking to it and being critical of it. And I understand it because you've got to find a safe place. And we haven't always had safe places. But I declare uh, by the power of God and the word of the Lord that we shall create safe 
places that are whole, that are not excuses, but they are places where people can be resuscitated, where they can be corrected, they can be put back in the game um, and be fully healed and fully strengthened. Um, I'm telling you, there's, there's things, there's people that are dealing with grief right now. There are people that are dealing with grief from the loss of loved ones and, and, and their faith, they thought that their faith was stronger than what it was, and they have not recovered. There are people that are dealing with uh, grief from the loss of momentum in their ministry, in their business. Some folks are dealing with grief with with looking at what's coming and saying, listen, I don't have enough finances or enough savings to last me another two weeks right? We've got to be able to be a place like the, like the first church in Acts, that we are able to come around one another and help people get on their feet and trust that we're all in this thing together. And they're not just going to take resources and run, but they are going to take resources and grow and pay it forward. Right. And so again, uh, I, I don't know who that's for, but some of you, you've been hurt. You've been disappointed. Some of you are leaders and, and, and we've heard church hurt. and We've heard all of these day, hurt, you know, whether it's in the church, outside of the church, like when you're hurt, you're hurt. Right. And sometimes life hurts us or blindsides us and the enemy will try to capitalize on it. And we have to be in a position where we can say, listen, just come here. I'm not even going to the first the first seven, eight days, I'm not going to even tell you what to do. I'm just going to tell you that I'm here. I'm just going to love you in place. I'm just going to, like, you just need to rest. I got you. I got you. You know what I'm saying? And so, again, we, like, this new normal, we keep talking about the new normal that COVID-19 is bringing, but there needs to be a new normal. God is shaking up the church. He's shaking up the house of God, whether, whether, whatever you believe it's being shook, right? He's shaking it up because we've been doing it a way that is not always been in line with the word of God. And like, we are more, we are more excited about giving prophetic words from big platforms than we are walking in the trenches with our brothers and sisters and saying, listen, let me help you get to the next place. True. And so we, we, I believe God is changing some things. God is rearranging some things. And that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean that we don't, we don't respond to the word of God because you need to respond because some of, some of the things that we're in or the, some of the reason why we're disappointed is because we were disobedient. Because we didn't hear God or we didn't pay attention to what was said. But even in that, there's still redemption for us. Right. And so we create a place where we can begin to bring healing to the brokenhearted, bring healing to those that have been stubborn. And now you're at a place ready to change. Right. right. So so it's not this black and white thing. But I'm telling you in this place, begin. Let's love one another. And and not only, yes, love one another. And that's not to trivialize it, but also begin to take ownership for yourself yeah. and what's going on in you come on there's so many times within our christian community that our focus is on everybody else everybody else is doing this wrong everybody else is not doing this everybody else is doing this and i'm not doing this everybody blah 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 blah, 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 blah. leaders to to lay people lay people to leaders whatever whatever everybody is an expert on what somebody else should be doing but if we can just begin to own what we believe the problems are and begin to fix them in ourselves. If, if, if I believe that there are no safe places, then let me be a safe place mm -hmm. for somebody. If I believe that there's so much self-righteousness, then let me not be self-righteous. Lord, whatever is in me that um, I am seeing that's coming mm -hmm. to my attention, God, I don't want that to be found in me. I don't want to be a person that's holding grudges against people. I don't want to be a person that's feeling some kind of way about somebody. I don't want to be a person that cannot stand in the gap for somebody because of a grudge that I've been holding or, or um, me feeling some kind of way or them treating me so like I don't want to be that like yeah. I so desire to be in right standing with the Lord I so desire to just be okay with him that I don't care about those other things mm -hmm. 
I don't care about those other things. And if and and if we could just transition into that place and realize that none of this stuff matters, none of this stuff, none of this stuff yeah. that has been taking up all of our time, that has been taking up all of our resources, all of our energy, all of our anger, all of our passion, all of our, it don't even matter. Yeah. It doesn't even you matter. You gotta ask the Lord to help you to let it go. You gotta ask the Lord to help you let it go. Because some of you are stuck, not because of what, not directly because of what people have done to you, but what you are holding on to. And, but some of you, it goes, go, it goes back to feeling right. But I'm right about it. Yeah, like a lot of it is like the hurt. Some of us, the trauma, the memory of the hurt has become bigger than the actual hurt. Right. And so the Bible talks about lay aside the sin and the weight. What are the weights in your life that you are dragging with you from one season to the next? And you're like, the Lord has promised you great things. The Lord has promised you new things. The Lord has promised to make your name great. The Lord has promised abundant blessing. The Lord has promised to open up doors and to make ways. But you are holding on to things that won't even let you get to that place. And the hurt was real. I get it. But the blessing that's ahead of you is so much bigger than the hurt that's behind you. Come on. And I'm telling you that you have to be intentional and ask the Lord, what are those things that I'm holding on to? Yes. Because some of it, it doesn't even look like weights anymore. It just looks like it's a part of you. Come on. And you, it has become your identity. And the Lord is wanting to separate you from this false identity from the real you so that you can run with momentum. You can run with freedom. And it's a real thing, guys. I'm telling you, I've been hurt before. I've been like, there's things that you're like, listen, I didn't deserve that. I don't, or whatever. And you can spend, you can spend years arguing that point, but you're still carrying it. Others have gone on and they're doing whatever, but you're carrying, you are in your own prison. You are in your own, uh, you are carrying your own uh, weights that is keeping you from your own blessing that has been set aside absolutely for you. It has your name on it, but you're holding on to things that won't let you get there. And so I'm praying for you today that the Lord in this time, because when we come out of this, you, the Lord wants to use you. Somebody say, the Lord wants to use me. The Lord wants to use me. And you have to ask the Lord, Lord, identify or show me the things that I need to cut off. Yes. Show me the things that I need to let go of. Show me the people that I need to forgive. Show me the me that I need to forgive. Show me the me that I can't see. Show me the secret weights that are on me, but I, I can't identify them. I pray even now that the Lord begin to free you from false weights, from false offenses, from real offenses, that the Lord would forgive you and uh, for help you to forgive others, to release you from the weight and the, the, the heaviness that you've been under. Some of you, you're doing things, but you're still not at peace. So even when you succeed, you're not happy. Oh, I feel God right there. Some of you are succeeding, but you're not happy. You're succeeding and blessing is coming, but you're not even able to celebrate it because you are holding on to things that are robbing you from the blessing that the Lord is putting on you. You're blessed, but you can't enjoy it. He's prospering you, but you can't, you can't uh, reap the benefits of it. And it's time to let it go because there's things ahead of you that are far greater and far um, more enjoyable than the things that you felt like you've been kept from, that you felt like you've been cheated out of that you felt like you've been done wrong. Mm -hmm. The Lord is not going to allow you to be made ashamed of. Yeah. But if you stay there, 
You, you won't go. The older saints said, I'm going to run and see what the end is going to be. You're not going to see what's ahead of you because you're spending too much time in something that is already dead and rotting. Mm -hmm. Feel God right there. And so I pray now that, Lord, you open our eyes to see those things that we need to let go of, to see those things that have been embedded in our heart as pain. Lord God, cut it out of us, separate us from it so that we can be whole and be at peace, Lord God, for the things that you have now and ahead of us. Yes. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. I, I feel that so strong. Yeah. I feel that so strong, especially for leaders. Yeah. For leaders who have been hurt by the people that they have been leading and they haven't been able to grieve, they haven't been able to even show that they've been as damaged as they are, I my heart goes out to you. Mm -hmm. And I even feel emotional about it now, but it's because I understand the weight of it. And so we are praying for you. Yeah. We are praying that during this time that you are able to really get away with the Lord and really just kind of uh, unpack what has been going on yeah. with you because it's a real thing. Yeah. And sometimes we expect ourselves to be stronger than we really are. But the beautiful thing is the Lord doesn't. He yeah. doesn't expect for us to be stronger than we are. And he does expect for us to share with him that the things that have been mm -hmm. going on. And I so believe that the Lord desires to put us back together again mm -hmm. because other things will come and other things will impact us, but he desires for us to be stronger coming out of this than what we went in. Absolutely. And I, I see that so clearly in my mind's eye that the Lord is not only shutting us away, uh, shutting us up and, and, and kind of setting us aside, but the Lord is doing some surgery. He's doing some transformational yeah. things on the inside of us so that when we come out, we will be different and we will be better. And I'm not just talking about the virus and people, yeah. people coming, uh, people healing, but I'm talking about spiritually yeah. and emotionally and mentally yeah. sound that the Lord is going to do a work in us yeah. here. So I just, I'm praying for you. And if there's anything specifically that you would like for us to, to stand in prayer with you about, please message us or Inboxes, WhatsApp yeah. us or whatever. Yeah. But we are praying with you and for you. And I'm praying also that you <laughs> find someone that is trustworthy, that you find someone that you can offload some of these things with, um, that will not uh, use it against you, but will help you to move forward, that will help you to get it off of your chest, that will help you just to, to get it out. Some of you, you know, because some of you are leaders, and so you haven't been able, you felt like, I can't grieve in front of the people, I can't you know what I mean? Like, I still got to be on every Sunday. I still got to be on every Wednesday. I still got to lead folks and act like I'm okay or what have you. And sometimes, like, you, you just don't have the luxury of, we don't have the luxury of falling to pieces, right? Not that that's a luxury, but we don't have that opportunity all the time. And so you need to find someone that is going to help you offload that. And I pray that you would find that. Um, we are here Listen, we've been through enough mess and enough stuff uh, that nothing shocks us anymore. You know what I mean? And we've been through things that we have, we have compassion because we haven't always gotten it right. And there was a time where we got it wrong a lot. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so um, individually and then as a married couple, whatever. And so again, there's no shade, but you need a place you need a place to go. Many leaders, no one comes to you and says, hey, how are you doing in a genuine way? Or how are you making it? How are you, like, how are your finances? How, what's going on with you, right? It's, pastor, I need this or, or I need that. Can you pray for me? Can I, you know what I mean? In the midst of uh, doing a funeral for a loved one, uh, pastor, I just, you know, you got a minute. You know what I'm saying? Like, all of those things, it comes with a job, I'm not complaining. It's part of the job, it's part of the grace, but there's also a grace to find a community that you can say, listen, I ain't got it today. 
You know, I just need to rest. I just need, I'm tired. I'm frustrated, um, whatever, you know, and you can do that in a safe place. And I promise you, we will cover you. We will love you. We will pray for you, you know, but I'm praying that you find wherever, but find someone, mm -hmm. find someone, um, because your ministry needs that. You need that. You're worth that, you know? And, um, and so, yeah. Praise the Lord. We're over time Praise again. Lord, we're way over. And it's your fault. Nope. So we love you guys. I hope this was a blessing to you tonight. Um, we're going to deal with the connectivity issues because it was glitchy, I, I think. Yeah, right we're going to try to get that fixed this week if everyone's not sheltering in place. Jesus. No, we are, we'll still be. Yeah, so we'll, we, we'll, find, we'll find the right spot um, to get her done. All right. We love y'all. Pray for us as we pray for you. Follow us on Life with the Lambs, um, on our Rain Life page. Uh, also, on Sundays, we are the church that we serve is Evening Light Pentecostal Church. Check out our live streams. Um, I'm so proud of the church um, coming into online. And so check it out. Share this with people that you know can benefit from this. Let's build this community. As you share ours, we'll share yours. We'll share yours if you don't share ours. And so, again, let's build together um, during this time and connect each other to um, our audiences. All right? I will talk to you later. Peace.